Let's take a look at a practical example of workforce planning. Something we heard a lot of in 2011 when I worked for a Fortune 500 company was that 50% of our leadership would retire in the next five years. These words of caution came from people outside of the company trying to convince us that there was a large risk to the continuity of our global leadership. My first thought was, how do they know that this is actually true? They don't know our company and they don't have access to our data. So the business question to answer at this point is, what exactly is the risk level to the continuity of our leadership? We'll have to use our imaginations a bit here since I can't show you the specific information on this company's leadership. Suppose we have three global regions. In reality, we had five, but let's use three in this simple example. Having looked at how people leave the company at this level of the organization, it was pretty much by retirement only. At this senior level, it was very rare that someone would voluntarily terminate their employment. Knowing this, we can look at the age demographics of our leadership and assign a level of retirement risk to them. In this example, people over 60 are coded red, high risk of retirement. Ages 55 to 60 are coded yellow, and less than 55 years of age are coded green. In the real study, the age ranges for red, yellow, and green were selected based on the actual historical retirement patterns in each country and not the age at which they are eligible for retirement. Off to the right, we have a visualization of the positions which are high risk of retirement. But let's not stop here because this is only the demand side of these positions, i.e. these are the positions which are likely to be vacant in the next few years. Let's take a look at the supply side. This is a visualization of the state of readiness of people behind our leadership positions. We can assign a risk on the supply side, similar to what we did on the demand side. Green positions have at least two ready now people behind them. Yellow has only one person ready to move up and red has no one ready to move up. With this visualization, we can see which positions need attention in terms of getting people ready to fill a potential vacancy. Now here's the fun part. If we align the demand side with the supply side, we can get a much better look at the overall risk to the continuity of the leadership. In this visualization, the red positions are the ones that have a high risk of retirement, but no one ready to fill the positions. We also define a second type of risk in orange. These are the people that we say are ready to move up, but the role they are ready to fill has little chance of being vacant. When you look at this list, the people you deem to be the A players or your top performers in the organization are the ones you need to protect. These are the people that are your top performers, but they are stuck. They have little chance of moving up. You risk losing these people to another company. So this is one example of something simple you can do in your organization, which will yield substantial value. Now you may have noticed that we segmented the roles at the leadership level. I had previously stated that segmenting roles at the leadership level didn't mean that all of those roles are roles of interest. So this study has a mixture of both roles of interest and other roles as well. To answer this specific business question about leadership risk, we needed to include all roles at that level. You can now do a further prioritization of roles to address by overlaying the criticality of each role on this study. Additionally, this company was not growing. In a growing company, you would need to add any new leadership positions anticipated by growth and align your supply side to the combination of demand created by both retirement and growth.